All right, welcome back to Impossible Versus Matches, the show where we take all sorts of pop culture characters and pit them against each other. I have my good friend Jose with me. Hello. And as you guys know, he's got a list of characters. I got a list of characters. We all have them in a randomizer. And we're just going to see how they come together, how they fight in some sort of crazy crossover scenario. Not about who would win, but about how we're going to get there. So, Jose, would you like to go first? Or uh, like to- no. So I'm going to go ahead and spin. <laughs> All right. We'll go from there. Oh, who shit. Yeah. All right, so I have Michelangelo from the Ninja Turtles. Okay, um, I got Alf. <laughs> <laughs> Alf? Yeah. I, so, the have you seen that cartoon crossover where they're all like trying to get this kid yes. to not do drugs? Yes, I've seen cartoon all-stars to the rescue. Yeah, okay. So, I've, it's already happened. So, it do we happened. continue? It has technically happened. Um, I actually watched that fairly recently because I, I found it at a yard sale. Of course you have. Yeah, I, I found it at a yard sale and I've had it forever. And then um, my girlfriend was like, hey, what's this on? Like, what's this Uh-oh. on the shelf? And I'm like, well, I guess we're going to watch it together. That's good. That's real good. Uh, there is a, there's a great scene in that where like the kid's sister has like a Winnie the Pooh plush and she's like Pooh Bear wants to know why you're acting this way and he just snaps and he's like well you can tell Pooh Bear to shut up (laughs) (laughs) absolutely absolutely fantastic Um, which is is odd to think about because just thinking about our uh, contestants here Michelangelo smokes weed every day, probably. <laughs> and Alf you has to. like this when you're just talking normally without having a real bad problem, dude. Cowabunga. Yeah. You know, Jones and for pizza all the time. Come on. Yeah. And, uh, Alf's and Alf is uh, just a, a cocaine fever dream. Oh, for sure. Of the 80s. <laughs> um. Which is funny because Alf is in Cartoon All-Stars to the Rescue is the voice of reason. Like, for some reason they picked, they're like, you know what? We're going to have Alf deliver the final message of this movie. Alf. (laughs) Yeah, Alf. Alf, he's back in podcast form. (laughs) Ah I understand that. (laughs) Remember Alf? (laughs) He's back. So, I mean, the crossover has happened be it in a anti-drug PSA, uh, ironically fueled by cocaine uh, fever dream. So I'm going to leave this actually up to your discretion. Do you want one of us to re-roll? Or do you want me to go through with this scenario? Ooh. Since you're doing this scenario, it's up to you. Uh... You know what? I, I Honestly, like, like let's 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 uh, let's find someone new for this. Okay, well, I'd like to keep Alf because I'm sick of having Alf on the list, but okay. we can save Michelangelo for something else. <laughs> okay, okay, all right. Let's uh, have an Alf, Alf around. Right, so we'll save Michelangelo for someone else. All right. Uh, and so let's redo this. Who do we got? Hopefully it's not someone I did in like the six episodes I recorded before this. <laughs> I have Jenna Maroney from 30 Rock. Are you familiar with 30 Rock? I have seen very little of 30 Rock, but Jenna Maroney is definitely not one of the characters I would have <laughs> remembered from there. But you know what? Sitcom and sitcom, give me a brief rundown. I'll I'll make it work. I'll pull something out. Okay, so 30 Rock is based off of Tina Fey's uh, SNL tenure as head writer. Right. 
uh, and Jenna Maroney is the star of The Girly Show, which oh, really? uh, Alec Baldwin is the new executive, uh, you know, trying to retool The Girly Show into something marketable. Oh, um, I am remembering now. I mix this up with Third Rock from the Sun. Absolutely not. No. <laughs> And I was like, oh, good. They're both aliens. But uh, no, no, I, I know 30 Rock a little bit more. How okay. do you fellow kids? <laughs> yes, exactly. That's, that's where all that comes from. Right. But so she hosts the girly show. Yeah, she, she's like the main actress on this sketch comedy show, which seems to be like her and one other guy the whole time <laughs> until they add in Tracy Morgan. Okay, okay. Um. And so, you know, like, she just starts off being, like, just a regular, like, kind of crazy actress, but then, like, she kind of spins off into, like, complete insanity, <laughs> like, okay, but still being the lead actress of the show. Um, you know, she talks about uh, not getting an Emmy because there's no category for living life theatrically okay um she talks about how um she can't she can't sing uh in harmony because she sings too beautifully you know things like that where okay her ego is out of control all right i i think i've got this she she's sketch comedy and i know 30 rock you know Big ass building, lots of stuff going on in there. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, so to set the stage, um, Jenna Maroney, you said her name was? Yes. Okay. Um, so Alec Baldwin's character has gotten into cocaine. <laughs> um, okay. And now, I mean, he, he's, he's like a TV executive, so, you know, it's not too far off. And now, somehow, his cocaine hallucination has been picked up on Alf's alien mothership. Mm -hmm. And this brings Alf there because you know what Alf also loves? Coke. Hey! <laughs> Bump that or what? <laughs> and so, so he appears there, and now Alec Baldwin's character is like, he he thinks that Alf's a hallucination, and he he doesn't like that one bit because you know what? Personally, if Alf was to show up at my place, I wouldn't want him there. <laughs> Sober or not sober, Alf is not welcome. Um, so he tells Alf to go away, and he's like, oh, okay. So he goes, and that, that's what brought him there in the first place. So uh, now Alec Baldwin's character is completely irrelevant. Um, but he goes down uh, to he goes down to the set of the show that uh, Jenna is Jenna's part of. The girly show, TGS. Yes, the girly show goes down to, goes down to that set, and it's one just classic, you know, classic mix-up because he's down there wearing like a Hawaiian shirt, so people just assume like he's a grip, or like a sound guy or something, and they're just like, yeah, get get right in here, and so he goes in and he starts, you know, cracking a bunch of one-liners, and he mentions how much he loves cats. And now, we know why Alf loves cats, but they don't. <laughs> so, it just so happens that on the girly show, they're doing a cat episode. and uh, a, a cat lady sketch. Yes. Which is a, a recurring joke on the show, by the way. Oh, wow. Lucky guess. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so you know, sketch comedy, they're like, wow, he's making a lot of jokes, and he loves cats. He's perfect for, you know, this bit. 
So they go and they're like, oh, Jenna, can we, we have this guy? And she's like, yeah, whatever, as long as he doesn't upstage me. And uh, upstage her, he does. <laughs> <laughs> By devouring all the cats while yes. they're alive. Well, first he's, first he's just obnoxious. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And Mm -hmm. she's already getting annoyed. And then, um, well, then he eats a cat. (laughs) Bites the head right off. Yeah. He's like, oh boy, a delicious, a delicious cat. (laughs) And just, you know, just, just gets right into it. And the shock of this is a little too much for everyone to handle (laughs) I was trying to process what just happened. Yep. So Jenna is now mad that she has been upstaged by this uh, gruesome incident. She's more she's more uh, caring about the fact that she's been upstaged by Alf of all creatures. Um, so you know she starts trying to uh, she starts trying to strangle him, but it only makes him angrier. <laughs> And that's that's as far as I'm going to get with that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Strangling Alf gives him more power. And now and now Alf is no more and hopefully we'll never mention him ever again. Completely wiped from, from your list. Yep, completely wiped. Got Alf it. Gone. Alf dealt with. All right. That is, of course, until our Alf episode where one character is Alf and we just spin the wheel for all characters Alf has to go again. <laughs> the Alf apocalypse. Yes. <laughs> all right. All right. So that being said, it's now your turn. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and do the little randomization. Spin it for you. Mr. Krabs. Mr. Krabs. Yes. Okay. Uh, I've got Nandor the Vampire from What We Do in the Shadows, the TV series. Where? Okay. Have you seen that show? I have not seen that show. <laughs> it is fantastic. I have you seen heard the, the movie things. What We Do in the Shadows? No. No, I have okay. not. All right, so it's a movie made by Jermaine Clement of Flight of the Concords. Yeah. And Taika Waititi. Which you can't go wrong. Yeah. Uh, and they play vampires that live in a flat together uh, in mm-hmm. New Zealand. Uh, and the show is the same concept, but with different vampires living in Staten Island. All right. Uh, Nandor is like the lead. He's like kind of the head of the household and he um, he is an ancient vampire from like pre-Sumerian like you would call it Iran now but he calls it El Camadar from like the, okay. the 1300s you know. All right. So like uh, he is He's known as uh, oh fuck, Nandor the I want to say it was like merciless or something like that. Anyway, he always talks about how much he he used to pillage and stuff uh, back in the day. Basically, a hun. So funny vampire past his prime. Yes. All right. Are you satisfied with him and Mr. Krabs? Him and Mr. Krabs. Okay. I have to figure this out because they're too, like, because vampires can't go across, like, bodies of water unless they're in a coffin. This is true. Yeah. So here's what's happening. Um, Nandor gets a letter summoning him to come back to El Camadar to bring it back to its glory, right? Okay. He still has he still has followers, right? 
that right. have descended throughout time, like how Apocalypse still has followers from in X Men. You know, like he'll have modern day followers trying to bring him back. Right. Yeah, he's got a cult. He's got a cult, right? Yeah. Uh, so he gets this letter. He's like, I'm going to go back to El Camadar and Guillermo, get me a boat. And so his familiar Guillermo, uh, who, by the way, has Van Helsing blood in him. And huh. that's like kind of a, a, a twist that like really affects his character arc in the show. Uh, anyway. He's he's been Nandor's familiar for like ten years, and he's been wanting to be a vampire ever since he saw Antonio Banderas in Interview with a Vampire. Mm -hmm. uh, so he just does like whatever Nandor wants him to do. So he he books a boat to go to take him to Okamadar, like basically back to Iran. Right. And while he's in his coffin waiting to be transported back over to Iran. Um, fucking pirates, man. <laughs> Just <laughs> As they do. You know, like, they hijack the ship. Mm -hmm. They don't find anything valuable. They see this big-ass coffin with, like, a bunch of dirt in it. And they're just like, what the fuck is going on here? And then they just sink the ship because they get nothing out of it. Hmm. The ship goes down. Coffin, like, comes out in the... Uh, in the ocean and lands right on top of the crusty crab. Oh. So, huh. Yeah. That'd be really big too. Exactly. Because <laughs> you don't right? you don't really think that Mr. Krabs is just a regular crab like in reality. <laughs> if you're right. Wrong. He's just a crab, right? So he's tiny. Yeah. So what's gonna happen here is that the coffin just completely destroys the crusty crab. Right? Oh yeah. But it lands in a way that it's just a, a completely new like obelisk of sorts throughout all of Bikini Bottom. Like right. it's surrounded by like everything. Right. And uh -huh. and so like Mr. Krabs looks at this and is like, I've got a new attraction idea. Right. Because he can't because <laughs> he can't just like be right. a burger restaurant anymore. He decides to turn it into a, a full like haunted house attraction because it's a giant coffin, you know. Like, was, how much more metal can it get? Right. Uh, and so, you know, he decides to like start excavating it. He gets SpongeBob and Patrick to like just kind of, you know, like kind of dig their way through and yeah. and just kind of sort it out, get all this dirt out of here, right? Mm -hmm. Figuring it out. And meanwhile, Nandor completely just woken up by this experience of him just like crashing down to the bottom of the ocean. Right. Like what am I getting in it? Cause vampire magic. Uh, <laughs> and so, you know, like he's just in the coffin. There's no water, but there's stuff like trying to burrow in a sponge and a starfish just come in and he has no idea what to make of it right so <laughs> then mr krabs comes in and just looks up at this giant vampire just sitting there with his arms crossed like excuse me <laughs> can you are, are we at el camadar yet <laughs> is this how Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. He's trying to talk to these these small creatures and inanimate objects. Uh, and they have no idea what he's saying. So to him, to them, he's just right. You know, this massive being, the same way like what would happen if Cthulhu tried to talk to us, right? There's an yeah. elder god to them. Mm -hmm. And just completely like reverberating through their bodies mm -hmm. and mr krabs is just pissed that there's someone already in his giant coffin right right so uh that's when the fight begins and he just starts like fucking trying to claw at, at nandor <laughs> in the <laughs> and nandor's like fuck <laughs> it's, it's a mild annoyance for sure it's a fucking crab trying to trying to attack me <laughs> 
And he's yeah, got little boy. pants on. And he's got little pants on. And that's that's uh that's as far as I can get. You know, that that kind of sounds like a prime like nineties SpongeBob episode right there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Honestly. Yeah. Um it does open up the question though, like if a vampire cannot cross an ocean unless in a coffin, would they mm. even be able to survive like underwater? Because water is not like a weakness of the vampire. Right. right. So like that's not how you kill a vampire. They can just yeah. like what happens when like they can't cross it, right? But yeah. I don't know. Like, in the show, it goes over like weird rules like that, right? Where you can't, a vampire can't come into the into the room or into the house unless they're invited in, right? right. So there'll be several times where like they're at a door somewhere and they'll stand there until someone's like, "Come in, <laughs> oh, thank you," and then and then they'll come through. Like it's not like a barrier is like holding them or anything they just stop because yeah. that's the rules right it doesn't show what happens if they break that but there is a scene where like a long lost descendant of nandor's dies of like old age and fright because he decided to like go visit her and she's like an old woman and she like fucking falls over and dies yeah so uh her funeral is in a church and they can't go in a church right right but you know he's like it's my family you know and then and then they they just they sit there and they're like sitting there like they're gonna burst into flames and then yes they start bursting into flames while they're sitting there in the church and one of them's like i i have to go i'm bleeding blood out of my eyes and, and they just like to turn the camera it's shot like the office too so it's like documentary style oh, perfect uh when when they see it and it's it's spectacular i highly recommend it i've been i've been watching the office yeah yeah i crawled out from under my rock and watched the and started watching the office for the first time you haven't seen it up till now i have i've like seen uh, parts but i just never felt like it it's never felt like watching the office right now i've been watching a little bit every every day i'm in season nine right now oh okay yeah you're plowing through it then yeah um really really missing michael <laughs> yeah. point, because yeah, yeah. a lot it's a, of it's the a love totally different lost. show yeah a lot of the love has been lost, but eventually, you know, Dwight will do something funny. And, yeah. And then all is well again. But, mm-hmm. it, I don't know, something something seems off. Like, it's like the whole show pulled to that 70s show, Randy. But, <laughs> but... That fucking show crashed really hard in that last season. Yeah, but that's a story for another time. Um... I like this. I like this, Mr. Crab scenario. Mm-hmm. Um, that was that was the best I could pull out of my hands for that. Once you had him sink down, because I figured he'd have to sink down somehow. Yeah. Um, yeah. I was thinking, like, Mr. Crab, Mr. Krabs, in, in his infinite greed, would start making Krabby Patties out of him. <laughs> <laughs> out of the vampire. Yeah, because he's like, oh, look, it's meat, me boy. <laughs> and he starts, because he's like, it's it's free, so I can make a profit off this by making them, by making him burgers, but, like, he's just trying to pince off, like, mm-hmm. little little bits, and then, you know, Interesting. that just annoys our vampiric friend. <laughs> and, and then, you know, I don't know, he just kind of swats him away or something. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. That's one way. To, that's one way to do it. All right. Because you never really cool. think of Mr. Crab as being like a regular crab because it's not addressed very often. Because SpongeBob is from their perspective, right? So you could easily just like get mistaken and be like, "Oh yeah, he's like the size of a person." No, that's not the case. Yeah, not, not the case in the slightest. No, he is just a regular crab. 
but yeah so that's the episode <laughs> thank you for watching and, and or listening to impossible versus matches i've been joined by my good friend jose jose where can they find you uh, they can find me at Lucha Verde on Twitter, at the Lucha Verde on Instagram, and at Rec Room Jacks. Uh, shit's going crazy. We're all in this together. Wear your mask and wash your hands. Um, vote November. Yeah.